Hey guys, okay, Crystal here from Elite Hair Care USA. So we are going to do a shampoo on my client here who cut your hair off almost two years ago. Two years ago in April? Yeah. Two years ago in April. And this is your first press? Ever. This is her first silk press ever. <laughs> Um, and as you guys can clearly tell, this is a great amount of density here. A lot going on. So I'm going to show you guys how I shampoo clients who have extremely thick hair. Hopefully this will help some of you at home, especially if you're dealing with your children who have extremely thick hair. Um, it's not the easiest hair to deal with, but I'm going to show you how I make it very, very easy. Okay. All right. So I won't be able to really see any questions for the second but I will definitely show you guys all the products that I'm using, all that good stuff. Everybody says very thick. Yes. Oh, sorry. Okay. Sit up for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the previous video that I did earlier this morning, um, I used a concoction that I created over the last couple of years where it's um, equal parts of sea breeze and water and a drop of clarifying shampoo for really thick hair typically buildup likes to hide on the inside especially at the scalp level so i can see the buildup here so what i like to do is go through and this is kind of like a, a pre-treat because i know that there's buildup on the scalp so i'll go through and spray this on sea breeze can be found at any walgreens walmart Publix, rite aid wherever sea breeze is an astringent is usually used on the face so it's typically going to be in like your hair, your face care, skin care area of whatever store you're in. And it comes in different smells. Anyone is, is really, it doesn't really matter as long as it's actual sea breeze or you can also use witch hazel. Witch hazel is also an astringent, so it's going to be mild on the skin. The scalp is a part of the skin. Let's be common sense here. <laughs> And it should not burn. This is why you're going to dilute it equal parts with water. Okay. If you use sea breeze without the water on the scalp, it may create a tingling sensation, which you don't want. It's, it feels great in your mind, mm -hmm. it, but it doesn't feel great on the scalp. And it can actually do a little more um, or create a little more irritation. So I like to dilute it with water. All right. So this is going to be like a pre-treat because when you have thick hair, trust me, there's always buildup. There's no way around it because oxygen isn't really getting to the scalp. Yes, somebody said it would be in the pharmacy area as well, which is very true. So it just depends on the store. All right, and then you also wanna make sure that you spray it right in the front here in the crown area. This is another place that it loves to hide. All right, so I take my fingers, distribute. I'm not scratching with my nails. I'm literally just rubbing it all over the scalp. Okay, in the meantime, she came detangled I it when she came so I knew she detangled it but you can just go through just to make sure that it's not tangled if your hair is tangled you do want to detangle it before you start the shampoo process as much as I did I got you you did good okay a little water and conditioner so all I'm doing is just going through with the comb I'm using a wide tooth comb and just literally just pulling out any little coils that I might see to make this wash a lot easier for me. If you wait until the hair is wet, you are going to struggle. Back here is typically where a lot of the matting likes to hide. So I always like to part in here and just make sure that I go through this area really, really well. Which she did really good. She actually followed instructions, y'all. Yeah. I was like, I saw my email, I was like, let me, let me read the instructions. Like, it says very important <laughs> on it, but most people don't read it, okay. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna use warm water for the shampoo. So what I'll do is I'm gonna tilt you guys down into the bowl so you can see what I'm doing. This bowl is not my best friend. The water likes to come back for some reason and, and pummel and give me a headache. So I'm gonna remove this little 
tray thing that made no sense. All right, so my water is nice and warm. I have good pressure. You do want to make sure that you, if you're doing it in the salon, you do need to make sure your water pressure is, is really good. If you're at home, you got to work with what you have to work with. Okay, so what I'm doing is rinsing out the pre-treatment. If I could just get this to stop hitting me in my head, this would be good. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to use a little bit of our herbal detox shampoo. This is the clarifying shampoo, but it's a gentle clarifier, so it's not going to dry the hair out any more than we need it to. Okay, so herbal detox shampoo. And then I usually start on the ends. Now, this is where people go wrong. They think that they've shampooed the hair already and they have it actually tilt up for me. If you open back here, you'll notice that shampoo has not even touched the scalp. Okay? So, this is very important. So, I like to go through and pull the hair open. Get my hands in there. I lift my client's head up because this part is the part where everything hides. And after you're done shampooing, you're wondering why back here is so dry. Okay, clearly the crown is fine. But the nape of the neck right below the occipital bone is where we typically don't even touch. So we're gonna still use warm water. Is that too warm? Okay. And I usually like to keep the hair in the direction that I'm shampooing. So you don't want to go against the grain with this with this hair. <laughs> you don't want to go against the grain with your client's hair who's really coarse or really full. Because you're going to create matting and then you're going to work a lot harder. So for me, I usually keep the hair in the same direction. Some people like to leave a little bit of shampoo behind. I'm a big believer in shampooing or rinsing out all of the shampoo. So what you see me doing is I'm stretching out the hair so that I can make sure that there's no shampoo hiding anywhere on the scalp. So that really just opens it up so that water can really get in there. Okay, so here's where the important part comes. I'm gonna still.
I'm going to take some of our Moisture ELT shampoo. This also is a great detangler or like a preliminary detangler. I use so much. I swear I go through this bottle like fast. Oh, my hair is about to soak it all off. The good thing is it doesn't require that much. Oh, oh wow. Okay, so this is all the shampoo that I'm putting on her hair right here. It doesn't require much, but it's gonna give a great amount of slip. Okay, so you wanna emulsify in your hands. How you get your shampoo in is I touch the ends of the hair first, and that's where people make the mistake. They think, oh man, I need thousands of gallons of shampoo for one head of hair not knowing that if you just tap the ends of the hair and distribute the shampoo, it is going to sud, and now you have more than enough, I have so much shampoo here, more than enough shampoo for the entire head. And shampoo moves, it's movable, so you don't need a whole bunch. So for those of you who go through a bottle of shampoo every wash day, there's no reason. Okay, so what I'm doing is pulling and stretching the hair, now, here's the good thing about Moisture ELT. I'm gonna show you guys. This works for some. It doesn't work for all. If you're extremely tender-headed, I would not do this as much. Are you extremely tender-headed? You can't be, not with this amount of hair. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lightly rinse my hand. This only works for some clients, not everybody. Take my wide tooth comb. And I can literally comb through the ends of her hair. That's how good moisture ELT is, okay? I can literally just kind of rake through the ends of her hair. I'm not trying to detangle it, but I'm helping to create a easy way for me to get through the shampoo process. And there's a hidden spot that had no shampoo on it, just as I said. Okay, shampoo's movable. That doesn't mean I need to go and grab more shampoo. And guess what, guys? I'm not taking a bunch of hair with it. Are you? Hair crackheads up there. Yeah. It drives me nuts. Okay? So all I'm doing is using it to kind of stretch the hair. Because I know when I get to the conditioner phase, I'm going to have to do this again. So I like to do it as I go. But you only do it when you can. And I'm literally just breaking through. I'm not trying to detangle. I'm just opening the hair up. Okay, so if you can tell, I'm like getting through this really, really quickly. If you detangle slightly as you go, your job is going to be so much easier towards the end. And if you notice, I'm not going all the way to the root. I'm just doing the ends. That's all. And I'm going to show you guys the comb as soon as I'm done so you can see that no hair was lost during this process. And by doing this, it also gives time for the shampoo to really cleanse her hair, her scalp, really add that moisture in and begin that process of hydrating the hair. All right, so I'm going to take this off now. That is all the hair that came off. That's it. Hey babe, just have a seat. I'll be with you in a second. Okay. Okay, that was all that came off. All right, so come on back for me. So we're gonna still use warm water, okay? We're not using piping hot water, it just needs to be warm. And then you can turn your water pressure down if need be at this point because it's gonna sud even more. Moisture ELT, ELT suds a lot. And I'm not gonna rough the hair up, I'm just gonna continue pulling it in the same direction that I've been doing it, okay? I wanna keep it detangled.
Now, can you guys clearly tell this is a this is all bubbles? That's all it is. It's bubbles. So that tells you that was a lot of shampoo. So I'm gonna try to get some of these bubbles out. This thing hates me, so. So can you tell a little goes a long way? If any, if you can tell that a little bit of moisture ELT shampoo goes a long way, put a one in the chat. I would not know her porosity unless I actually tested it. But by the feeling of it and it being so coarse, I'm going to assume that she's low porosity anyway by the coarseness. You got the work? Oh, you got the work? Is that what you did? So far, the one? Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and now I'm going to continue pulling through. Is she relaxed or natural? <laughs> She's relaxed. Can someone answer that question? Is she relaxed or natural? She's natural. Thank you. Okay. Now you can do a second shampoo at this point if you choose. I go by the feeling of the hair, which a second shampoo is not required right now. You can also check the scalp to up for me. Just to make sure that I got some soap still in there. I see the buildup is gone. I love to look back here. This is where I know is the true test of if the buildup is gone, which it is. I'm gonna rinse her some more because I still see a little bit of soap. All right. She is going to get a silk press. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Let me turn this up. If I can. All right, guys. We're going to tilt the camera up so you guys can see this part. Tilt this down. Tilt this one down. All right. I'm going to pull you guys back here. Sit all the way up for me. There we go. All right, so you guys can see this part. I wanted to make sure everybody could see. So I'm using my towel just to towel dry the hair. Okay, this is a microfiber towel, so it soaks up more water than a regular towel, but I hate the way they feel. I try to skip over these towels in my closet. All right, so we towel dried her. Now I'm going to take some moisture ELT conditioner. I start with a small amount first and then I build on it. I don't start with a lot of conditioner automatically because sometimes it can fool you. So I'm going to use the same amount of conditioner that I did shampoo. All right, so I have that amount of conditioner. Same thing to distribute it around the head. I tap it on the ends first, and then I go through and I pull it through the hair. That means I know that every section will have conditioner on it, but if you need more, you can use more. 
But I start this way first. Okay, so we're gonna take our best friend here, which is our wide tooth comb. And because her hair is so dense, I'm gonna do small sections. You can use a clip to clip it away if you need to. Smaller section with dense hair is easier to, to deal with when you're trying to detangle. I can get another clip. So you have to be patient. This is not a, a one, two, three, and everything's good to go. Be patient. Okay, take a wide tooth comb. Remember, we've already started the detangle process from the beginning. So now I'm just gonna hold on to the hair. And all I'm doing now is really combing through the hair because her hair is actually detangled already. And the Moisture EOT Conditioner also is another one that gives great slip to the hair. Okay. And then I take my finger and I rope twist it. So she's actually gonna go under the dryer with a processing cap, so this is gonna work well. I don't like to leave the hair in an afro state because then it's gonna revert back. Okay, same thing. How long did it take you to detangle your hair last night? I did it this morning. Oh, this morning. And it took me an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, so I want you to time me. Okay. <laughs> and let's see how long it takes me to detangle. Okay, so we're gonna do another parting. Start at the end. And I'm holding the hair with tension, but not too much tension. Am I hurting you? No. Okay. So remember, we've already started the detangle process, so this part would be a lot easier So the reason for the rope twist is so I can keep those areas separated that I've already messed with. If it comes out, then you just have to twist it smaller. Like it just did. So what I wanna do is make this smaller, split it into two. Sometimes that's what you have to do, guys. And this is, part, this is the part that's gonna make your rinse really, really easy. For children, I'll actually rinse them with the twist still in their hair. So I'm doing them smaller. It's telling me I have to. This part works best for children too, guys. So don't be afraid to do this part. And it's not, we're not really doing this for neatness. We're just doing this to keep the hair detangled while it's under the dryer. All right, so I'm gonna finish up back here and turn this way for me and then tilt down. The nape and right here in the crown is typically the hardest to get through, but if you follow my steps, it won't be so complicated.
All right, so we're moving our way up. I did have a clip in her hair, but I think it's lost. Okay, it's over here. <laughs> okay. I'm just going through the end. So right now, that's all that has come out of the hair. Why didn't I blow dry her and brush it? Because she's getting a deep conditioning treatment. And I don't blow dry stopping wet hair. That hurts. Yeah, and it, it's, it's, it tears the hair apart without you even trying. This one I know I'm going to need to put into two, so let me just go ahead and do it. Oh, yeah, if you're in the middle. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. The yeah. middle is typically <laughs> the most coarse. Yeah, got a lot of arm workouts doing the middle on here. Yep, sounds like that. <laughs> so we're about 40% of the way complete with the detangle and comb out process. So if you guys notice, I'm not like, Ugh! I'm just going through. I haven't added any more conditioner because I have more than enough on the hair. You can't say that it's not supposed to hurt. Because some people are more tender than others. So are you going to tell them, oh, it's not supposed to hurt because it's just, it's like hair. No, everybody has a different tenderness. A different, what is the word I'm looking for? Tolerance for pain. There we go. But you can't really say, oh, it's not supposed to hurt. All right. So we're right here in the area that is typically the most dense. So I start at the end and work my way up. I have not added any more conditioner to her entire head. Having eight gallons of conditioner in your hair is not gonna assist in the process. It's how you're actually handling the hair. It's gonna change your outcome. See, everybody says your hair is beautiful. Oh, thank you. It's a lot of work. Clearly. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do this side over here. As you guys can tell, I'm taking my time. I'm not rushing through it. This part of the process is very important. This is going to depict how easy your blowout is. It's going to depict how well your deep conditioning treatment takes. All of that. So we're about 60% of the way through. So this is all we have left. Majority of the head is done. Do you want me to turn? Mm -hmm. Do you want me to turn? No. Good. I can kind of tell. All right. So we're still coming through here. This is more of the dense areas. And I am going all the way to the root. This one might come out, I know it will. I can actually tell. Now with her hair, what I'll probably do is leave the rope twist in when I'm doing the rinse. 
which will make it a lot easier, but you'll have to use low pressure water and rinse a lot more. All right, so we're gonna go over here to the front. The front typically isn't so bad because you do the most to the front anyway. I haven't cleaned my comb out, so I'm gonna really show you guys how much hair came out when I'm done. And I'm really coming through this head. <laughs> So when you do smaller sections, it does make the detangling process a lot easier. When you try to do it in large sections, it gets overwhelming, especially when you're dealing with clients who have a lot of density or if your hair has a lot of density. Just sit in front of your TV, yeah. take nice small sections, and go at it. And even drying the hair like this will make life even easier for you. And it's going to stretch out that curl pattern while it's under the dryer naturally. If you get caught on the snag, pull the comb out and then go back to the end and comb through and then go back in. So I'll show you guys that again. If you get caught on the snag when you're detangling, I'll show you what you do. I'm gonna split this section in half because it's kind of thick. Okay, so say you're detangling the hair and you get caught on a snag in the detangle. Don't try to pull through it. So let's say I'm doing this and I get caught here. I'm gonna take my comb out and go back and rake through the ends again. Okay, and then I'll go back through. If I get caught again, I'm gonna do the same thing. Pull the comb out, go through the ends until I'm able to actually not get caught. That's all you do. So if it snags as you're trying to detangle, take the comb out, go back to the ends, comb through the ends, and then go back onto the hair again. And that will easily detangle your hair without actually pulling it out. All right, so last piece. I always start at the ends when I'm doing a detangle. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys my hands and then I'm gonna show you guys my comb. How long? 15 minutes. 15 minutes of a detangle. It's crazy. Never have I ever. 
<laughs> All right. So here's my hands because, you know, some of the hair will get on your hands. Okay. It's all hair. There's the comb. So we got these little pieces here. Let me pull them off. You shouldn't have a whole head of hair in a comb unless you just took out a protective style. Okay. And whatever's on my hands. That's all the hair that has come out of the entire detangle. That's it. And there was a little bit of pulling. It was a lot of a lot of hair. That's it. Okay? That's all. So now I'm going to take my processing cap. And we are going to put the processing cap over the twist. Okay? She is going to go under the dryer. I don't want this to drop in here. Okay. She's going to go under the dryer for another 10 minutes. Mind you, the conditioner has already been on her hair for 15 minutes. So I'm going to let her sit under the dryer for 10 more minutes. That'll give her 25 minutes of deep conditioning in total, with heat and then without heat. And no, you don't want to add a lot of product because you want the hair to be nice and light and airy. Because you are right, she is getting a silk press and that will make the hair heavy. That's another reason why I'm not putting her under the dryer for 30 minutes. Because that is going to make the hair very heavy. Okay? Alright, so go ahead and go to the dryer for me. So I'm going to set my dryer for 10 minutes. And then I'll come back and talk to you guys for a second. There we go. Okay, let's chat for a second. So everything that we did today, I hope you guys were taking notes or getting as many tips as you possibly can. As I said, I used the Herbal Detox um, shampoo as the clarifying shampoo. I also used the Moisture ELT shampoo as my moisture shampoo. So I did my cleanse and then I did my treatment shampoo. My treatment shampoo was the Moisture ELT shampoo. And then I used my conditioner. If you guys noticed, I did not have more than a handful, and when I say a handful, from here to here in a very thin amount of product on my hands. I did not need a lot of product. I didn't use half the bottle. I didn't do any of that. You don't need a lot of product to make this work, and a lot of times, you guys are using tons of product to then go back and waste it, okay? These shampoos and conditioners are luxury shampoos and conditioners. They are titled as such because you don't need a lot. Someone asks, is your dryer on medium or high heat? The dryer is on permanent heat. So permanent press, high heat. It's on high heat for 10 minutes. That part is more by preference. It honestly doesn't really matter. I could have put it on medium or even on high. I'd still do it for the same amount of time. Okay. I also use the Moisture ELT conditioner. In between my shampoo and conditioning processes, I did pre-detangle the hair. And then with the conditioner, I detangled it in its entirety in small sections and I rope twisted it. So I'm doing a whole recap of exactly what I did. In the shampoo process, I did lightly pre-detangle the hair using my wide tooth comb. These are called shampoo combs. If you notice, it is nice and thick. Yes, it's pliable, but it's not bending like crazy. You definitely wanna make sure that this comb is very firm. So not the cheapy ones that you get at the, the, the beauty supply, the one that can go like this, that is going to give you a straight headache. It needs to be nice and firm. Nice and firm, okay? Nice and firm. That's what I usually think of my hair. Yeah. And it make, if you use the little cheapy, cheapy ones, those make the detangling process even longer because they're bending as you are trying to comb through. So you want to make sure that you are using a good quality comb. It's very important. After I went ahead and did the condition and then I detangled in a very small, um, very small sections because her hair is so thick, when you're dealing with thick hair, you don't want to try to detangle in large sections. When you're dealing with long hair, you also don't want to detangle in very large sections unless their hair is long and thinner. But if it's long and dense or thick, you definitely need to make sure that you're taking that time and you are detangling the hair in small sections. It is going to make a hell of a difference in your outcome. It is going to make your job less complicated for you and your client. And it's going to make that actual process smooth so you can get through it. Do those products have CBD in them? No, Moisture ELT does not have CBD in it. 
the shampoo, the conditioner, nor does the herbal detox shampoo. That does not have CBD in it as well. If you notice, I did not spray anything else on her hair. And let me back up. I did do a pre-cleanse with the concoction that I mixed up. As I told you guys, that was a free recipe. I'll tell you again. So you're going to do equal parts of sea breeze and water or equal parts of witch hazel and water and one drop of your herbal detox cleansing shampoo just one drop not one skew one drop okay mix that up and spray that on the scalp before you do your shampoo process it is going to make the scalp a lot cleaner it will help to remove a lot of that buildup before you even start and i did miss talking about that during the review portion as i was talking about the shampoo fast forward to the end, I rope twisted her hair, put a processing cap on her head. The detangle process manually took about 15 to 17 minutes-ish, somewhere in between there. So I put her under the dryer for an additional 10 minutes of hot heat or high heat with a processing cap to go ahead and allow that cuticle to open up. It did already start to pre-soften and open with me spending 15 minutes with the conditioner on the hair and working it in. So that 10 minutes now is going to really help it penetrate the actual hair shaft and really get all that goodness and richness into the hair. Why I'm not doing more than 10 minutes because I'm going to do a silk press and I don't want to make her hair even more heavy than it already is. If the hair is dense, it's going to be dense during the silk press phase. So that means I have a lot of hair that I have to get through and I have a lot of hair that I have to work with. If I use too much product or allow too much product to sit on the cuticle, it is going to swell and it's going to make the hair very, very, very hard. Okay, so that's the one thing, that's a pro tip that I tell for all my stylists. Don't use a lot of heavy condition if you're going to do a silk press, okay? So like I said, today uh, through the next two days is March Mad Growth, where you'll save 20% off by using code MARCHMAD, okay? Off of all the shampoos and conditioners. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.